Robert Wessler died on June 5th. He was an innovator in TV, first with CBS, then with Ted Turner, and on his own. There will never be another Bob Wessler, and TV will never be the same as it was during his 40 plus years as a producer and an executive. I met him in 1972 when he was the executive producer of special events at CBS at the political conventions in Miami. He did space shots, he did assassinations, he did uh, Nixon's trip to Russia, and lots of other things for CBS, all these special events. Bobby, as uh, most people called him in those days, he went from the mailroom to become the president of the CBS television network with a few stops in Chicago and at CBS Sports and so on. He became the youngest president. He was 39 when he made president of CBS Network. I, uh, on the day I saw him, which was one of his first days at, at Black Rock as president of the network, I had just come from the world premiere of Network, the movie, and wound up in his office. And it was surreal because uh, Pat Ashevsky, who wrote the movie Network, had it exactly right. It was uh, remarkable. Um, so, Wessler. Wessler tried to do new things all the time. Um, his whole career. He loved TV. He loved what it could do. He loved to have lots of people working for him. He loved to spend other people's money. And it was always good to have him on your own side. We've chosen parts of two different interviews for you to look at today. One was in 1976 at Super Bowl X in Miami, or the day after Super Bowl X, when he was reflecting on it. And the other is from 1986 when I was asking him about TV and sports, and you'll see a few pieces of it, 1986 in Dallas at the NBA All-Star Weekend. So check it out, and if you want to see more, there's a way to do it. Just go for it right over there. Or maybe it's over there. I'm an extra, and to a degree, daytime is an extra, and, and news has its nice chunk. But, but television, all those things make up the whole, you know. But the bulk, you know, the centerpiece of television is, is what is in the American family room or living room or rec room or in the kitchen, uh, you know, between those critical hours of 7 and 11 o'clock at night. That's what we know, what we call prime time. And I think that's the area that needs the most attention. Uh, it has always been or it should be the, you know, the biggest profit maker. And I say that in a proper sense because it is the dollars that, that uh, are accrued from that area that help to support the rest of the area. So it's not just all gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, but I think that we need to concentrate on that area. I think that there are more and better things that can be done in the future. Where do you go from here? Hopefully I stay at CBS for a long time to come and I continue to, uh, you know, have a variety of jobs and amass a variety of experiences and uh, can uh, help people and uh, help the system and maybe make the system better. Which system is that? The television system, the American socio-entertainment system. Explaining the American Social Entertainment System and your role in it. And now you're playing with and against people in Luxembourg, Austria, Hungary, and uh, Hungary, places like that. And the first question is if you would be so kind as to explain how all this has changed in the last 10 years. Well, the world. You're enjoying it. Oh, well, I, you know, I always have a great time wherever I go. Um, uh, the world is shrinking. Uh, it's more practical to do international television, and I hate the phrase international television because I don't know what that means. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, it's easier to do things today uh, around the world or to connect certain parts of the world than it was five years ago or certainly 10 or 15 years ago. We talked a lot in the 60s and 70s about television around the world, global television. Uh, it's still not a total reality. I can't, we just can't press a button today and be seen around the world. But we're a lot closer to it today than we were five or 10 years ago. 
I spent 21 marvelous years at CBS. I went there when I was 20 years old. I left when I was 41. Uh, as far as I was concerned, I was going to be there for 45 years, uh, and I would have retired when I was 65. Um, uh, fate and the way the cards get dealt sometimes are not the way you'd like them to be. In my case, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to be. Uh, but I was lucky. Uh, I left there. Uh, I went out and did some things on my own. And all of a sudden, there was a crazy guy in Atlanta, Georgia, by the name of Turner, who needed somebody like me who'd been around the business and could help him. Uh, and I joined him in 1980, six years ago, six years ago this week. And it's been a terrific relationship. You spend an awful lot of time with people who are now 15, 20, 25 years younger than you, I assume. Right? I mean, all the people who are doing... I, I went from being the youngest guy in the room at CBS to being the oldest guy in the room at TBS in fairly short order. When I was 38, 40, I was the youngest guy in the room at CBS. And now that I'm approaching 50, I'm the oldest guy in the room at TBS. I went through that transition in a fairly fast five or six years. Nobody's done it quite like you. I don't think. Well, I, it all goes back to starting early. I started when I was 20. I got bounced out of there. I was still young. A lot of guys don't get bounced out until they're 50 or 55, and they do maybe one other thing and then kind of drift off like friends of ours have done. Uh, I didn't have that luxury. I was 41 years old and I was out of there and I had to go fight like the Dickens. Well, I had. Six. Personally, I have a very clear sense and I can't account for it that it's a, it's a time when there's lots of changes, small changes, but there's more room. There's more, because everybody is so big, there's a lot of room to run around. Yes, uh, on, the, on the other hand, on the other hand, this is a passive time uh, when, in spite of the bigness of the industry, um, uh, the people who are being looked upon to do things today are people who are financially oriented, and I would say uh, less, they're not do, what I call do people. I'm a do person. You give me a project, and I'll go out and get it done for you. Uh, I'm not sure that that's a skill that is in high demand today. Uh, what is in demand today is taking the WGN, if you will, for a moment, and making it more profitable, making it more efficient. <laughs> uh, things, things can always be more profitable. Oh, you can always make more money. You can always fire one more person, do one less story, uh, run one more sitcom that you paid less for. Uh, as a broadcaster, uh, as, a, as a do person, well, I'm not sure I, you know, that, that that's something for me to be involved in. And as we look around at television stations today around the country, broadcast properties, uh, they're really in the hands of uh, money managers, bankers, uh, venture capitalists. Um, so I, in terms of getting things done, one of the things I like about Turner Broadcasting is that we have an owner who wants to do things. He wants to win awards just as much. Sure, he wants to make money, but he likes winning awards and doing things as much as making money. There aren't too many of those kinds of people around today. I think the curse of network broadcasting is the fact that they're rated 365 days or thereabouts uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, they're, they're always pressured uh, to do something that is going to be more popular than necessarily good. Hey, you know, when it's good and it's popular, when it's the Cosby show and you get 50 shares, life is wonderful. Uh, but when you'd like to do a documentary once in a while, but the documentary is going to get a 20 share, and you can put some comedy in or a movie in and get a 26 or a 30 share, um, that's not necessarily good for the broadcasting business or for America as a whole. Do you think of yourself more as a technician or an artist? 
<laughs> oh, you, you know that no matter how I answer that question, I cannot possibly come out ahead. <laughs> I'm damned if I answer that one way, and I'm damned if I answer it the other way. I, I think I, th I, consider, I consider myself an artist. You know, I don't go around saying artist here, artist here. But, uh, yeah, I'm an artist. Of course I am. Uh, I'm a pretty good television producer, and that's, a, that's, that's an art form.